Bibles, turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel. Hey, Jamal, if, you're, if you will, stay with me up here this morning. I am going to be eternal but not everlasting today. Oh, now you amen. Hallelujah. I've been preaching here for six and a half years, and I finally got an amen out of you. Hallelujah. 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to preach this morning. Um, including our, in, in, inside of our series, Undignified. How many of you were here last Sunday or you listened to the live stream archive or the podcast? You're were, you were up to speed. I, I preached on David bringing the presence of the Lord back into its proper place. And today I'm going to rewind the tape and we're going to go back to a moment of pivotal, uh, pivotal importance. And um, it is the story, if you're looking at your Bible, you see the subheading of David and Goliath. If, if you've heard the story of David and Goliath, please do not tune me out and assume this is a Sunday school lesson. Uh, the Lord has given revelation that, that I just has blown my mind. And, and, and I want us to get there real quick. I want us to get there real quick, and we're going to walk through. It's so important to me that the Lord, the Lord wouldn't, he gave me so much material that I can't get past the first three verses. And we, even, we hadn't even gotten into the Goliath showing up yet. But I believe it was pivotal. And, and y'all going to have to forgive me. I try to keep my jacket on, but I'm sweating like I'm, I'm ready to preach. And, and we're just going to have to figure that out this morning. Um, I, I was in my house the other day. I was in my house um, the other night. And, and there, were, there were some church members that had came over and hung out with Emily. People don't come over to hang out with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm introverted by nature. And if you want to watch football, this cool, come on over, but, but don't expect me and you to have a conversation. We're either going to watch football or we're going to have a conversation, but I can't do two things at one time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm, hallelujah. And uh, I even had some, some of the some church members over, and, and it was girl talk, and they were doing their thing, and my toenails are already painted, so I decided to go on upstairs and make sure you're listening. That's all I'm doing is make sure you're listening. And I went upstairs and started watching football, but uh, when I came in from my appointment, I, and, and, and our company left, it sounds so snobby, but I'm not, I'm just, I had to recharge, and if you're an introvert, you understand what I'm saying, and, and after, after the, 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 um, the visitors, they, they kind of left and did their thing, and I did hang out for a few minutes, I feel like I need to make excuses now, uh, uh, they, I, I came back, and I sat down in, in my living room, and, and on my, on my floor, um, right below the fireplace, on, on the floor of the fireplace, it's, you know, our mantle is there, the television, the mantle, the fireplace, and then the floor, and right in front of my fireplace. Um, M, several years ago, went to a store, and she bought our letters, Walters, W-A-L-T-E-R-S, and, and, and they're displayed there, and, and it became a game for, I guess, some of our church members to try to take my last name and just make all kinds of words out of it. And, um, and I was like, this is strange, because I believe in decency and in order. Bless God, I put it there. There's a W-A-L-T-E-R-S. Don't be messing with the W or the S or anything in between. Hallelujah. And they took the W and the S. Throw, 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 throw my name up there for me, JB. They, they, took, they took my my name, Walters. And they pulled away the W and the S, and this was what was left. And I was sitting there that night, and the Holy Spirit said, this Sunday, this is what I'm going to use you to do. I'm going to, I'm going to anoint you, son, to change some people. I've never seen altar in my name. I've heard my name all my life. I have never seen altar inside of the Walters. But today, the, this week, the Holy Spirit reminded me that this is a day, this is changing day for somebody this morning. It's, okay. This is changing day for somebody this morning. And I want you to know this is transformation day. You are about to be altered today. Not because of my last name, but because of my assignment with what the word of the Lord is about to release into your life. Somebody say amen this morning. Father, I pray for every hearer to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. I cancel the noise of the enemy this morning. So that the ears of the Spirit may be open today to receive what it is in season. Rhema word is what we're looking for today, God. Founded in the meat of the gospel so that the fullness of the fruit of the gospel, the Spirit may be manifest in our lives. Today, change somebody. 
that we might forever be changed in your image and in your likeness. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen this morning. Uh, I'm continuing our series on undignified. I'm continuing our series on undignified. And the subtitle of my message this morning is where the battle begins. You see, every one of us are in a battle. Every one of us are dealing with confrontation. Every one of us are dealing with conflict. In some way, in some place, in some area of our life, it's amazing how we can experience victory in one place and warfare in another place at the same time. And it's amazing to me that we can move in the fullness of God and see demonstration in one area, and then in another area, the, the enemy begins to battle us. It, it, you know, we, we may have victory in our church. And, and warfare on our job. We can have victory in our marriage and our children begin to struggle. We can, we can have, you understand what I'm saying? We can have, it's amazing. But I want you to know all of those warfares are really in one place. And, and I want you to know that this water, this battle, this thing that you're facing, it doesn't matter in what area of your life it is, where it all begins is right here in your mind. I, I want you to know that the reason why the enemy battles you is because with every blessing there is a battle. And, and, and I, I submit to you this morning that the greater the blessing that is upon you is the, an indicator of the greater the battle that is against you. And, and I want you to know that the enemy would not battle against you if you were not a, if there were not a blessing before you. And, and so what you need to understand is in the area where he is attacking you, it is an indicator of where the blessing is about to overtake take you. And, and I want you to know, so, so if, the, if the enemy is fighting me in my marriage, it's because there is, he has recognized that there is a blessing about to come on my marriage. And, and so he begins to wage war in me and over my marriage because he recognizes that there is a blessing that is about to overtake. And, and the, watch this, the level of battle waged against you is an indicator of the level of blessing that you stand to receive. Now, I want you to know this morning that if you are going through great struggle and you're dealing with great anxiety and you're dealing with great pressure and you're dealing with great warfare in a specific area, it is an indicator that the level of intensity and warfare that has been waged against you, it is an indicator of the level of a blessing that is about to be in your possession for you to receive. And, and, I, and I'll just remind you that a robber doesn't come to an empty house to steal anything. And, and I'll let you know that, that a that a thief doesn't ever hold up a bag lady who doesn't have anything. And the only reason he would ever fight you is because he caught a glimpse of what it is that you either possess or you are about to possess. And, and that ought to be good news for somebody in the room this morning because some of you have been battling things all of your life. As a child, you were abused or you were neglected or you were abandoned or you were cast away or you were pushed aside. And little by little, whether by an uncle or a family member, something happened to you because the enemy all the way down to a child recognized that there was an anointing and there was a call and there was a destiny and there was a purpose on your life and he caught a glimpse you say pastor how could the enemy who doesn't know anything know everything like God does recognize that there was something significant I remind you that Pharaoh caught a glimpse he caught a prophetic word that Moses was being born and he killed a whole lot of babies trying to stifle out the potential of a man of destiny like Moses I remind you that King Herod had no idea that Jesus was Jesus but he knew that there was something on the inside of that child that had been born a son had been given they re he recognized that somewhere somebody was called wonderful counselor mighty God everlasting father and the prince of peace and he went to wipe out child after child because he recognized that there was a baby that had been born full of power and full of purpose and full of potential and he was trying to eliminate the destiny that was I feel the anointing, the destiny that is on his life. And I want somebody to know today the reason why the enemy abused you and neglected you and abandoned you is because he caught a glimpse even at your young age of what kind of anointing and what kind of purpose and what kind of call and what kind of power that you were going to have in your older years. And I'm here today to tell somebody the reason why you've had a war waged against you all your life, it is an indicator of the fullness of the blessing that is about to overtake you. Somebody ought to give him praise in the place today. Uh, 
Because watch this, if you are under attack this morning, that means there is something to gain. Uh, there is something to gain. And most of us get our focus on our battle as if there's something to lose. But I'm here today to tell somebody, you've got to focus on the battle of what it is that you are about to gain. You're about to step into a blessing. Uh, you're about to step into a favor. You're about to step into an anointing that your eye has not seen and your ear has not heard. And it's never even really entered into your heart what God is about to release into your life and the indicator of what your blessing is is the battle that you're facing uh, and I just want to remind somebody that sounds, uh, pastor that sounds real preachy so let me give you word this morning in John chapter 16 verse 33 the Bible says that I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace the reason why I need you to get this is because I want you in the midst of your battle to have peace have you ever been in a season of great hostility yet there was a peace that rested on you I remind you that the Bible says and the peace of God which surpasseth all understanding it will guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. And isn't it amazing in seasons where we allow the peace of God to guard our hearts and our minds, we can go through great adversity and great pressure and great strain and still have our peace. And here's how we can do it because we know, he says, in this world you will have trouble. I want you to understand this morning, trouble and battles are all a part of the process. It is a part of the process. You see, uh, 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 Lonnie a few minutes ago talked about the children of Israel. You see, Pharaoh was a part of their process. Uh, the warriors were a part of their process. The battle they faced was a part of their process. It was not the end of the story. It was the stretching and the straining of them to prepare them. Watch this. Because without that battle, you don't have the capacity to attain the fullness of the blessing in your life. And I want you to know, most of the time of what we're going through is not really for us anyway. I want you to understand, most of what you're going through is not for you. It's for somebody else. The Lord said to me this on Friday. He said, I allow you to go through things so that others can see what victory looks like on the other side of your adversity so they can be strengthened by it too. And I want to tell you, there are some of you that are going through great battle and you're going through great strain because God's going to use your test as a testimony. He, he's using your mess as a message to let people know that if I can do it for him, if I can do it for her, I can do it for you as well. He said, take heart, be of good cheer. In this life, you will have trouble, but take courage. I, I want you to take courage. I, I want you to take it. I don't want you to beg for it. I don't want you to wonder where it is. I don't want you to wear, find, find Waldo. I want you to take courage courage. I, I want you to take it. In the midst of your fear, take courage. I, in the midst of your pain, take courage. I, I don't want you to act like you've got courage. I want you to take it. I want you to get tenacious and have an attitude and get hungry and growl after courage and, and, and have courage and take it until you're not afraid anymore. And it, to where it overwhelms your fear. Take courage. Take courage. Take, take courage. Take present tense. I want you to take it. And listen, if you can't take courage day by day, take courage moment by moment. Now, take courage moment by moment. And if you can't take courage moment by moment, then take courage breath by breath. Uh, uh, breathe out fear. I'm breathing. I got courage to stand in this now. Uh, as long as this courage is in me and I exhale, I'm going to stand here courageous. I, I'm going to stand here and see the salvation of the Lord. Uh, does anybody hear what I'm saying this morning? I, I want you to understand today that, that I take courage. In other words, I take it. Don't let it escape. And, and although I may exhale, I got to grab it right back and put it back on the inside of me. I'm not letting courage run away from me. I believe that I'm standing on the promises of the Lord. I believe that God is gone before me making my crooked path straight I believe that if God be for me who can be against me I believe that the angels of the Lord are encamped around about me I believe that there's a hedge of protection built about me like Job and I believe that when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him I believe that I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony I take courage today hey uh. Mm, mm, 
will take courage. Huh? First John chapter 3, verse 8, watch this. It was, Jesus said it was for this purpose that the Son of God was manifested. Watch this. That he might destroy the works of the enemy. He said, take courage because I have overcome the world. The reason I came was to destroy the works of the enemy. He has already overcome what's trying to take over you. I want you to know this morning, he's already overcame what's trying to come over on you this morning. This is the battle. This is the fight. This is the war. I can lean on my own understanding. Or I can recognize that my battle is an indicator of the blessing that is available to me. I heard a, I heard a, a story a long time ago about a shoe salesman that they sent him into the bush in Africa, one of the nations of Africa. They sent him into the bush. He was a shoe salesman, young gun, sharp, aggressive, a little bit arrogant. Sent him into the bush of Africa. He lands there. Young gun, thinks he's going to be an executive, going to fly his way to the top and make his milly millies. Lands in the bush of Africa, gets out into the villages, looks around and there's nobody wearing shoes. Calls his executive, says, I don't know why you sent me here. Did I do something wrong? Why are you punishing me this way? Get me out of here. I want to come back because there's nobody here who wears shoes. They found some young gun who was hungry to make a difference in people's lives, who, who wanted to see that he could do things. They put him on a plane, sent him back to the very same village, in the very same bush, in the very same nation of the continent of Africa. He got out on and walked into the village and looked and nobody had shoes. And he got excited and he called his executive. He said, my God, send me every pair of shoes you have because nobody here is wearing shoes. And, and see, one opposition for somebody is an opportunity for another. You see, what you have to do is recognize the moment that you're in. And you can see what is missing or you can look at what it is to gain. And your opportunity is your opportunity, but your mind has to recognize which side it is on. It's the battlefield. It's the battlefield. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, it tells us that they're in this place called the Valley of Elah. There's this place I, in Israel back in November, myself, my brother-in-law, and one other pastor, we got up early on Friday morning while everybody else was getting ready for shopping. I had to get ready to have an encounter with the Lord. And I went and for 45 minutes to an hour. This is a picture that I took. I'm perched up on the hill overlooking the valley. To your left, this is the hill that I'm on, the mountain that I'm on. And across this valley, you'll see another um, elevation rise. That is where the Philistines' army had camped. It was in the valley of Elah. Men and women of promise were on one side. And their adversary was on the other side of a valley called Elah. This is what our minds look like. On one side of our mind, we believe in, in the promise and the potential of the Lord. And on the other side, we can't help but acknowledge the reality of our warfare. And the mountain of potential of God's promises sits on one side. And the mountain of the adversity we're facing sits on the other. And it's like we merge in the valley of despair, loneliness, and low thinking. I want you to understand today. That it's not your emotions you have to win. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 7, I believe verse 25, that it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. You see, it's not our emotions. It's not our spirit. That It is with the mind that we serve the Lord. It is a conscious decision that we operate in the fullness of our promise and our, and our chosen and, and our ability to be grafted into the beloved. It is in 
the mind. You see, the mind is the place where the greatest conflict is. I want you to understand this morning, it's not with your partner, it's not with your friend, it's not with your business, it's not with your child, it's not with your marriage, it's not with your singleness, it's all the greatest place of conflict is in your mind. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, there are more people that, that are troubled in their mind than their money and their marriage combined. I want you to understand today that more people have trouble in their mind than they do their money or their marriage. And, and I want you to understand today, and, and you know what I'm talking about because it's, it, our mind begins to go to war. We, 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 we're in a constant struggle. Do we believe or do we not believe? Do we take courage or do we take fear? Do we, do we stand and fight or do we run and flee? Do, what, what do we do? How do we handle this situation? And isn't it amazing that we went to bed tired, we slept for eight hours, but we woke up exhausted at the same time? I, I, how is it that I can go to bed at a decent hour, sleep for eight hours, and still wake up exhausted? I'm, I told you, this is altered day for somebody. You know what I'm talking about. You go to bed, you sleep for eight hours, and then you wake up, and you're still tired, and you're still drained. Now, you, you, because you slept, but you didn't rest. You see, the Bible says in Psalm 4 and 8 that we will both lie down and sleep in peace because he makes us to dwell in safety. And, and isn't it amazing that we can lie down and sleep, but not sleep in peace? Isn't it amazing? Why? Because our mind is at war and, and you woke up and your bed is soaking wet and you raise up in the middle of the night gasping for breath with a panic attack because you're afraid why because you're in the middle of a fight you're in the middle of a battle I, that that's why your bed's soaking wet and you can be laying there sleeping but your whole your whole bed is drenched with sweat because of the anxiety that is happening on the inside of your mind why because your mind is the warfare and, and it is the prize that your adversary is after because if you if you're adversary can get your mind that he can worry you and he can stress you and he can make you quit and he can make you stop and he can make you lie down and die and he can make you give up on your dream you see the battle is not in your marriage the battle is not in your kids the battle is not in your job the battle is not in your money the battle is not even in your health it's all in your mind and, and if you can win in your mind you can win in your money if you can win in your mind you can win in your marriage if you can win in your mind you can win win with your kids. If you can win with your mind, you can win with your job. If you can win with your mind, you can win with your health. And I'm here today to tell somebody the enemy has gathered together to war against you because he is after the trophy of your mind. He doesn't want your stuff. He wants your mind because if he gets your mind, all the other stuff comes with it. Comes with it. He's after your mind. He's after your mind. I'm going crazy. It's about to drive me insane. I don't know. Come here from Sikkim. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know where to turn. Should I move? Should I not move? Should I stay? Should I run? Should I, should I work it out? Should I let it go? I don't know what to do. Why? Because it's all here in the mind. On one side, we believe in the promises of God, but the reality of our enemy is on the other side, and it has created a chasm, and we feel like the edge of our rut is the horizon that we're living in it's in our mind it's in our mind but I'm here today to tell you how to move into victory uh, for Samuel 17 the Bible says that now the Philistines now the Philistines have gathered their armies together you see they didn't bring a covert army they didn't bring their army and not their navy they didn't bring their navy and 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 not their air force they didn't bring their air force and not the Marines they brought all of their armies together and they said this is the place where we're going to take our stand this is the place where we're going to destroy these people of promise this is the place where we're going to wreck absolutely wreck the promise of God on these people's lives they gathered together to battle but the problem is they gathered in the wrong place I know where I'm going I'm ready to throw the Bible says that they gathered their armies together to battle. I want you to understand your army, the, the adversary, the battle, the people that you're facing, the enemies that you're going against, they are not after you just to talk. They're after you to take you out. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And until he can damn you to hell, he hasn't gotten the fullness of what his, his priority is. They gather together. And see, the problem is they gathered at Soko. See, if you knew what Soko meant, you would amen me right there. They gathered their armies together. They decided that they were going to encamp at the place called Soko. 
That word soko in the Hebrew, it translates bushy or a thick hedge. But I want you to see where soko belonged. <clears throat> uh, they gathered together at a hedge that belonged to Judah. Uh, they came to the place to do battle where the hedge was in Judah. Now, if you don't understand what a hedge is, let me break it down for you. Satan went to God and said, I'd like to deal with Job. But, but the problem is, God, Satan said to God, the problem is I can't get to him because you have put a hedge of protection around him. And the reason why I can't get to him, all I can do is hurl my thoughts and hurl my voice and try to intimidate him is because I can't get past the hedge. And I'm here today to tell you your protection is in your praise. And everywhere, listen, listen, you're trying to find your edge. What you need to do in battle is find your hedge. You, you don't need an edge of your warfare. You, you need a hedge of protection. You, you need to make sure that your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That you have the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation and the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. You see, it is all in your hedge. Your edge is in your hedge. I want you to know today, your hedge is found in your praise. Every time I come to a place of praise, I'm recognizing that I'm raising the hedge of my protection. I, I'm protected. My marriage is protected. My kids are protected. My house is protected. My job is protected. Every time I breathe my praise, I raise the hedge to insulate me from the works of the enemy. Ah, here's the way the Lord told me to say, everywhere I get my praise edge, I can have my protective hedge. Ah. See, I'm telling, here today to tell somebody, it's time for you to get your edge of praise back. It's time for you to move into undignified territory. The enemy that is against you, he's not fighting fair. He's not playing the odds. He's not coming in and showing his hand. No, he's manipulative, and he's working, and he's cunning, and he's trying to take you out. But I'm here today to tell somebody, if you get your praise edge back, he'll bring your protective hedge up over this situation. I wish somebody giving praise in the place today. Uh. No, I'm somebody needs to praise edge today. Somebody needs to give him a praise edge today. Somebody needs to get the edge back in praise today. I want you to raise your hedge with your praise edge today. Uh. I came to alter somebody. I, I came to change somebody. I, I came to turn this battle around. I, this is not going to take you out. This is going to take you over. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You see, the enemies gathered. The enemies gathered at Soko. Uh, they gathered at the hedge. And I want you to know they couldn't gather what wasn't there. I want you to know this morning there is a protection for you. Uh, thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. You're my glory and the lifter of my head. Ah. There's a hedge, there's a hedge. They came to Soko. They came to Soko. They came to Soko, which belongs to Judah. It doesn't belong to the enemy, although the enemy may be there. I want you to know that it belongs to Judah. And maybe you didn't bring a praise with you this morning. But the good news is, you came into a place called... You came into Judah. And I want you to know there's protection in the house this morning. I... The name of the Lord is a strong tower. Righteous run in and are safe. And maybe you don't have enough energy to lift your hands, but you came to a place that raised the hedge of protection over you. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me hurry. Let me hurry. Oh. You see, they came to Soko and they belonged to Judah. Huh? And watch this. And they encamped, oh God, they encamped between Soko and Ezekiah in Ephes Damim. I'm praising because I know where I'm going. You see, Soko means a hedge. But they, 
they camped. They tried to divide Soko from Ezekiah. Ezekiah means dug over. It, it translates to be gone through, to comb, to investigate, to remove the unnecessary. You didn't shout, so let me go deeper. Soko is the hedge that belonged to the place called praise. And the enemy tried to separate Soko from Ezekiah, the digging over, the investigating, that belonged to Ephes Damim. You're going to preach this, just give an offering after you get done. <clears throat> Ephes Damim, watch this. It actually translates the edge of the blood. The edge of the blood. They, they came to encamp between the investigation at the edge of the blood. <clears throat> you see, Soko in Judah represented my protection. But Ezekiah in Ephesus Damim represents my redemption. He tried to divide my praise from my redemption. The enemy, oh, I'm telling you, this is where it all begins. The enemy comes in to try to separate my praise from my redemption. He tries to create a wedge between my praise and my redemption. Yeah, what, what I have dug over in my redemption, the edge of the blood. You know, this is what I love about God. Be because most of us believe we have to be all the way saved and all the way understanding and all the way spiritual and all the way theological to really go into our salvation. But your protection is connected to the edge of his redemption. You, it, in other words, you can get saved this morning and completely protected this morning at the same time. You don't have to go to the growth track, although I want you to. You don't have to go to the Bible study. You don't have to clean out your refrigerator yet. You don't have to do any of that stuff. That the moment you cross over into the edge of the blood, you are protected and you are covered and you are redeemed and you are renewed and you are protected and you are grafted and you, know, and you are restored and regenerated and taken back into the fullness of relationship with God. And what the enemy has come to do is separate your praise from your, from your redemption. But I'm here today to tell the devil he came to the wrong part of my life. <laughs> He came to the wrong place in me because I praise him because I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. I praise him because I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my uprising. I'm blessed in my down setting. I am the joint heir with Jesus. He is my friend. He is my way maker. He is my redeemer, my restorer, my renewer. Is there anybody glad for the blood? this morning ah, I love this Ephes Ephes E-P-H-E-S is plural and the Lord tell, told me to tell somebody this morning that you didn't just get a drop but a drop will do he said, I have rolled your redemption to the point of exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. But I just want you to know only a drop will do. But I didn't just give you a drop. I gave you enough for you and your wife and your husband and your job and your child and your destiny and your purpose and your... You hear what I'm saying this morning? Is anybody grateful for the blood today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The battle, the battle is to separate me from my praise and my redemption. My praise and my redemption. Isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that, that God brought you from redemption to a place called praise? You see, it's right there together. What God is doing was together. He's trying to separate your praise and your redemption. And, and I want you to know this morning that as long as you allow your heads to prop up against your redemption, you're always going to be protected. You're always going to be in territory. You're always going to be in the place of the beloved. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying this morning? 
The Bible says in verse number 2, And Saul and the men of Israel gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elah. The enemy camped to drive a wedge between the protection of my praise and my ability to investigate the significance of my blood redemption. But the people of God encamped in Elah. The word Elah here translates the place of a tree. They decided they were going to encamp, to dwell, to homestead at the place of a tree. They decided that while the enemy was going to try to wedge between their praise protection and their investigating of their redemption, the people of God decided that they were going to dwell at the place of a tree. Now, you don't have to be super spiritual to catch the revelation of where you and I can go to find a place that has a tree. You see, in seasons of great battle, you must dwell at the place of a tree. You can't run around and trying to get your allies together. What you have to do is create what the military call a rally point. It's, it's a rally point. It's a place where, although we may be scattered abroad and moving in our assignments from here or here or here, there must be a rally point that we all know when the battle is at its intense, we must, must withdraw to where we have the most numbers. And we've decided that we're going to have our rallying point at a place called a tree. You, it's interesting to me that they withdrew to the valley of Elah. They encamped. Their rally point was at the place of the tree. But we also find, it's so interesting, that, that right there in that valley there was this brook. Now, if you already know the story, you see the stones that David is about to use against his giant was found in the place of a tree where the water brought him his weapons. Anywhere you see the water throughout the New Testament and Old Testament, it is a picture of the Holy Spirit. You see, you see, you got to understand, the Holy Spirit is a picture of water. It's moving, it's shaping, it's, it's going, and it's knocking off the rough edges of what his weapons are going to, choice are going to be, and it's all found. You see, it's not the brook and then the valley of Eli. It's not the tree and then the brook. It's not the cross of Jesus and then the Holy Spirit. No, it is the cross and the Holy Spirit gathered together at the same time time. If I rally to the cross, I, I've come to the place where the Spirit is. If, if I run to the brook, I've run to the place where the tree is. My redemption and my power are all manifested in the same place. I, the brook was at the place of the tree. Today, I need to hurry. Today, the Philistines, verse 3, stood on a mountain on one side and the others on, and Israel on the other side, and with a, the valley between them. And I want you to understand, the Lord said this. He said, tell my people there is a protecting, and it happens right where the battle of your mind begins. You see your enemy has gathered against you. Your mind is the prize. But today God has come to alter how you see the odds. Because your enemy picked the wrong place come after you the Lord spoke to me very specifically about this moment heads are bowed eyes are closed see I went ball coach on you today 
challenging, encouraging, strengthening, pushing. <clears throat> because you can do it. But I'm calling you to the rally point this morning. It's the place of the cross, the place of the tree. The commander of the Lord's army is here today. And he's called you to the rallying point. For in those seasons of great battle, you've got to abide at the tree. This morning in a moment, we're going to raise the hedge in Judah. And somebody, while their hedge gets back, you're going to find the edge back. And we're going to investigate the blood today. And it's going to remove the unnecessary. And it's going to remind us of just how impenetrable his blood is. Hear me. This battle is not for your wallet. This battle is not for your marriage, your children, your singleness. This battle is for your mind. And the Lord's given me specific instructions this morning for somebody who's battling. Some of you have said, I feel like I'm going crazy. Some of you, thank you, Holy Spirit, you have a diagnosis and they have slid you a prescription because they have tried to commonize spiritual warfare but today you about to get your hedge back I feel like it's all falling around me God today you about to get your hedge back I don't know how I'm going to make it another. You're about to get your hedge back. And when you find your hedge, you're going to realize you're standing at the edge of your redemption as well. There's somebody in this place this morning. You've been running and you've been running and you've been running. And your, your way of trying to win against this war that you've been in is dodging the bullets, running from here to there, from relationship to relationship, from party to party, from bar to bar, from job to job, from credit card to credit card. But I'm here today to tell you, we're about to get you into the blood again. And the moment you cross over into the edge of the blood, you are completely redeemed. You are completely renewed. You are completely restored. Stored. And right beside of your edge of blood is your hedge of protection. And I'm here today to tell you, today is the day the odds are about to get revealed to you. That you're not beneath, you are above. And you're about to walk in victory in spite of the significance of warfare. That for somebody in this place today, the blessing is about to overtake the battle that you've been fighting. But I need to pray for you this morning. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You don't understand, Pastor. I've been battling this battle for years. Yeah. But today's victory day for you. Because you thought they were going after your stuff when the battle has really been for your mind. Ooh, thank you, Lord. I hear Romans 12. Somebody is about to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, if you recognize this is a divine moment for you, if you recognize that this is a divine moment for you, I want you to get out of your seat and I want to pray for you. Come on, I want you to come forward right now. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I want you to come forward. This is a moment for you. This is a moment for you. I want you to get out of your seat. Don't wonder what's going on. Don't wonder who's doing what. I want you to get out of your seat and go, Pastor, this is for me. This is my moment. I, this is my moment. This is my moment. This is my moment. This is my moment. This is, this is it. This is divinely in order. This is a rhema now word with 
the meat of the gospel. And I'm telling you, you're about to get the cake to taste and see just how good he is. I need, I need my prayer team with me. I need my prayer team with me this morning. This is my moment. 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 